Hi everyone, welcome to Murica Creations. Today it is time for some thrift flips. You know by now that I love thrifting and flipping. So I'm going to share with you two flips today. A piece of furniture and a more like a trash to treasure flip. But before we get started, I quickly want to mention that this video is part of the Third Thursday Thrift Flip Challenge that I'm hosting together with Tammy at the Rusted Willow. I will leave a link down in my description box to her channel, so go and check her out later. Lots of creative ideas over at Tammy's. I will also leave a link to the playlist of this challenge down in my description box for more thrift flip ideas. So let's get started. For my first flip, I have this beautiful larger nightstand or side table, if you will. It's wood and it has a lot of caning going on and it has a protective glass piece there that is uh, way too small and I will completely transform this piece. I bought it uh, long over a year ago for 10 euros, about the same in US dollars, at a Facebook marketplace. First thing I'm going to do is take off that glass piece, don't need that anymore, save it for another project. And then I'm going to remove the hardware. These knobs are very pretty, so I'm going to keep them. And now it's time to remove that caning and I'm doing that with my pliers and a screwdriver, just bend it all up and uh, eventually I used a knife as well so anything I had on hand to get those uh, cane pieces off on the top of the sideboard it was a lot easier to remove the caning didn't uh, break any of them so I will save them for another project you never know when you might need some caning next step is to sand off the whole piece because I will paint it later on so I need to get rid of the varnish and I do that first with like a um, 60 grit sandpaper, then I moved up to a 180 to get a smooth finish. So now I'm going to use this MDF sheet to replace the caning. It's uh, very thin, but it's the right size for my side table. So I take my measurements like that and then I transfer them to the MDF sheet all the empty spaces from where the caning was and then I'm cutting them all out with my jigsaw it's so easy to work with MDF so easy to cut it and um, you can paint it, or you have to paint it, it doesn't look very good without painting. But that's what I'm going to do today, so perfect. If you're new to my channel, hi, I am Marika, and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, an occasional dupe, renovation of my home, and I even do some pottery and some painting, anything creative really. Please join me, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join my YouTube channel. So I'm going to put wood glue on those wood strips there that had caning on them. Like that. And place my MDF sheet 
right there. I started out with this top piece and actually screw in a couple of screws but I noticed in some places that uh, those wood strips were not that sturdy anymore quite old wood so they tended to crack when I was uh, screwing in the screws so in the end I opted for just the wood glue just put a lot on clamping them down and it worked like a charm Next step is to put on spackle along the edges of my MDF piece and where I have uh, the screw heads so it's altogether very nice and smooth. I do my best to take off any excess directly but it doesn't uh, matter that much because it's very very easy to sand off later on. On the NDF, around the piece, I will go in with this beautiful stencil and some spackle to get some texture. Like that, it looks beautiful. And I do it even on the back of the side table because you never know how you're going to position it and it might show in the future. So everything has to look good all the way around. And here I'm doing it on the drawer as well. Everything has dried and uh, now I'm sanding off any excess and any um, sharp uh, bits of that speckle. And now it's time to paint my piece and I'm doing that with a very light greyish color and I applied two coats. You can easily stop uh, after painting this piece, but I opted to go in and make a painting on the, the top part, and you can see in the left-hand corner my inspiration piece. And I really love that abstract background and the lilies. So I was going for a similar look here, I love the colours. But then when I got to a certain point here with the background, I just thought to myself, girl, what are you doing? I don't have anything blue in my house. So where am I going to put this piece? So I decided to change it. Et voila! Here it is in more of a burgundy color scheme and on we go working more with the background I have that inspiration piece to know how lilies look like but I'm just freehanding a little bit here making it my own piece and if you don't like painting yourself and you want to recreate this piece, just go for a stencil or something on the top that would look super pretty as well. I painted a little bit messy on the edges, up on the frame, but it doesn't matter. I touched it up with uh, some of that light greyish paint later. Time to paint the lilies. Just figuring out how large I want them and I ended up making them slightly bigger than they appear here. Two of them. I start off with a base coat of this light greyish color and when I'm done and it has dried a little bit I will go in with shading and highlights and then make them look a bit more three-dimensional
I have started to add uh, some gold tones where I have the shadows and the lilies and now I'm going for even more gold across the painting. Once I'm happy with the result, I set the table aside to dry completely. A couple of hours at least. It's acrylic paint, so it dries very quickly. And once completely dry, I go over the top surface with one coat of my satin finished varnish. Et voila, here it is, sitting in my living room looking very pretty. I'm so happy with the result and the color choice as well. Tell me what you think. And the texture on the side, I didn't do anything extra there, just left it as a subtle texture. And the hardware is the same that was there before. Now it's time to style it a little bit, I like that, for the time being I'm changing things up all the time, a little bit of that old world touch here, not too much on the top because I want to see my painting. For my second and last flip today, I will work with this old canvas. Got it from my sister-in-law and uh, it has some holes on the side and a lot of texture. So I will scrape off that bulky texture, or plaster, whatever it is, as much as I can. It doesn't matter if there are still some texture left. So there we go and I'm taking some of my own spackle just to smooth the surface out a little bit, set it aside to dry and then I will go over it with a greyish colour that I had on hand and this I did quite a long time ago and I just set it aside and I didn't know what to do with it but it's prepared but now I know so this is how it looks after two coats and I found this at the thrift store for one euro don't know what it is some kind of lid or something but it I thought it was cute ornate yeah I can do something with it and what I'm going to do is to make a clock and that is the clock face, that ornate piece. But I have to reinforce on the thing on the back with tiny pieces that goes like that and one across all the way around. So I have my measurements and I'm taking my miter box and my Japanese hand saw and just cut the pieces to size like that. And then I will have that on the back as well, a piece of um, cardboard paper. So I'm marking where I need to make pilot holes. And I need to drill them in kind of an angle. You will see in just a second. Here we go. It goes like that. And here I'm sanding off all the pieces. This um, flip here is kind of a trash to treasure, I think. Just one euro paid so far and uh, the canvas I got and the uh, wood strips I got for free from our hardware store. 
So I need to hand more here to get everything in place and Habi was helping me. So I have marked where I want my clock face to be and I'm taking just my exacto knife here and cut slits in the canvas and then you can put that clock face down and I have these pieces of hardware as well got them from one of our sons and I will put them on the corners like this Now I'm going to make the surface pretty and I'm using a stencil with roses on and spackle to create some beautiful texture. And I'm just randomly putting that stencil down and putting the spackle on. Cover almost the whole piece and a little bit on the edges as well. Once I'm happy with the result, I will set my piece aside to dry for a couple of hours at least until the spackle is completely dry. And then I will go over it with a fine grit satin paper just to soften it a little bit. No sharp corners, edges anywhere. And then it's time to paint it and I paint it with a light greyish color the same as I used for the side table in my first project today and I gave it two coats time to spray paint my metal hardware the clock face and the corner pieces and I'm using a gold spray paint and I only put on one coat. Now I'm taking some antique gold color and the big dry brush and dry brushing the whole piece to get that texture to pop. And what I mean by antique gold color is just a plain acrylic gold color and uh, just a dab of uh, black acrylic paint into it and um, voila you have a more vintage look so I'm going in for a soft dry brush to start with and building it up step by step so I don't uh, put on too much directly and now I'm taking some screws and put my corner pieces in place like that and now it's time to put on the clock face putting it down the slits that I made in the canvas To keep it in place, I will turn the piece around like so and then I will screw it onto my support there. Time to put on the clock mechanism. I have ordered um, a piece from uh, Amazon. I will leave a link down in my description box to a similar piece. And I'm choosing my clock hands here. And I'm going for black because the gold ones won't show.
If you like this video and videos like this, consider subscribing, maybe share with a friend and hit that like button as well. It will help my channel to grow and I can spend more time creating inspirational content for you. Something missing on the lower part of my clock and I found this wooden bird on another project piece that I made years ago and I think it would look pretty there but it will not stay black. I need to paint it. So putting on two coats of uh, my light greyish colour and then dry brushing it with my antique gold colour just on the edges I'm attaching it on the canvas like that just with the help of some hot glue. Et voila, here it's sitting in my bedroom looking beautiful, I think fits perfectly with the rest of the decor in the room. It's working. I'm happy. Love the texture. So tell me, what do you think of my flips today? Did you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments. If you are inspired and you want more inspiration straight away, head on over to my description box and hit the link to the playlist of this challenge so many thrift flip ideas thank you so very much for watching see you soon again in my next one until then take care bye